Welcome to Around the Empire. I'm your host, Joanne Leon. Today, Yemeni journalist and filmmaker Nasser Arabi speaks to us from Sana'a about the war in Yemen. In 2015, a CENTCOM commander told a U.S. senator that he did not know Saudi Arabia's goals and objectives in its war on Yemen and therefore could not assess the chances of success. More than three years later, Nasser Arabi helps us explore the answers to those questions. We talk about the U.S.-backed Saudi and UAE coalition's mission on Yemen, the Yemeni resistance, and Iran's involvement. Arabi updates us on the situation in Hodeida, and we discuss the recent AP report on the Saudi-UAE cooperation with Al-Qaeda. We recorded this interview on August 16, 2018. Today we're speaking to Nasser Arabi from Sana'a, the capital of Yemen. Welcome to Around the Empire, Nasser. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you very much for having me. How are things in uh, Sana'a today? It's quiet in Sana'a. There's nothing in Sana'a, of course, because there's no war in Sana'a. What's happening from time to time is just uh, airstrikes, US Saudi airstrikes. But today, today there, there haven't been any kind of airstrikes. From just in a broad, in a broad sense here, in Yemen, from the perspective of people in Sanaa, people you know in Yemen, uh, in and around Sanaa, who is attacking you and and why? Saudi Arabia and U.S. Or uh, to be honest, more honest and more more accurate, U.S. backed Saudis. No one else. U.S. backed Saudis have been attacking killing and destroying Yemen for four years now. No one else. And the United Arab Emirates part of the coalition, what's what's their role in this? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, United Arab Emirates is one of the, I mean, it's the second one, of course, and uh, it's also supported by United States. But when I'm saying Saudi Arabia, uh, I mean Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates because uh, without Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates would not have gone to the war. And without the United States, uh, Saudi Arabia would not have gone to the war. So uh, this is why I'm saying U.S. Saudi, U.S. backed Saudis. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you uh, clarified that for us. So the American narrative, you know, it's very confusing here. I think most people don't even know why we are in this war in Yemen. In fact, back in March of 2016, in a, a congressional hearing, a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing, the commander of uh, CENTCOM at the time was General Austin. And the senator from New York, Senator Gillibrand, she asked him, you know, what were the goals and objectives and what were the chances of success in this war? And he, uh, being one of the, you know, a pretty honest guy, said he didn't really know. They, they didn't really know what the what the goals were, and for that reason, he couldn't estimate the success of that. Senator Gillibrand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to follow the chairman's uh, line of questioning. So what do you believe the strategy is for this new campaign, and what's the ultimate goal? goal? In Yemen, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know what the what the Saudis uh, 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 the specifics of uh, of their goals and objectives. I can tell you that uh, that they're interested uh, number one in protecting their homeland. They have a, a border uh, with uh, with Yemen, obviously, uh, and and also that they uh, received requests from uh, from the president of Yemen uh, to uh, to help uh, with. Uh, with military uh, assistance. So. What advice uh, have you given or will you give the president about what our role should be? Uh, our current uh, uh, position is that uh, we'll uh, help the Saudis with uh, uh, intelligence and logistics and planning support. Uh, and, uh, and again, uh, they're, they're great partners, and I think they're uh, very much appreciative of uh, 
of the help that we'll provide them. So. What's your assessment of the likelihood of success? In, in Yemen? Yes. Uh, again, Senator, I, I don't currently know the specific uh, uh, goals and objectives of the, of the Saudi campaign, and I'd have to know that to, to be able to assess uh, the likelihood of success. Now, in the, in the media here, back in the beginning, the first thing, the first reason that was given for America's involvement in this war in Yemen was to fight al-Qaeda, and al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula. And it was also to restore the government of Yemen because the Houthis had moved in to the capital. And, you know, they said we have to help, you know, put Hadi back in power. Now, more recently, and of course, there was always a general justification that we have to support our allies in the Middle East. More recently, um, the narrative has been that, that the the Houthis, they always, you know, refer to Ansar Allah as the Houthis, and they call them, you know, the Iran-supported Houthis or the Iran-backed Houthis. And, you know, right now there's a very uh, negative attitude toward Iran in this country. And so it's implied that we have to fight this war because Iran is backing the the Houthis. What what do you think of that? Is there any honesty in that narrative at all? Yes, you mentioned many important things. You mentioned Qaeda. You mentioned uh, restoring uh, uh, the so-called legitimate government. You mentioned also the, the, that the um, many, many, many points, very important points. But uh, you said Qaeda, you said many other things. Uh, let me start with Al-Qaeda. Qaeda now is the, is, is the biggest winner of this war, the biggest winner of this war. The second is Iran. The second is Iran. Iran is also winning every day without losing anything, without losing anything, right? And yeah, and the, the third point you mentioned also, the, the senior official uh, said he doesn't know. Yes, I know why he doesn't know. Because they, they thought that uh, Saudis told Obama it's only two days or three days, days or weeks at most at the beginning. So they, they don't know why now they are there, because now Saudi Arabia is, uh, I mean, it doesn't want to 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 end with be, with being uh, defeated and all these things. No. So this is why uh, many uh, U.S. officials don't know w what the objectives, the uh, what the objectives, what the goals. This is why they don't know, because it's only it's only for Saudi Arabia now. It's they are only you know they are, it's only for the sake of Saudi Arabia, they are doing it because it's uh, Saudi Arabia is embarrassed. Saudi Arabia is in a, a big and uh, bottomless, bottomless uh, quagmire and it's uh, going deeper and deeper in this quagmire. So this is why they don't know. So Qaeda is the biggest winner. Iran is the second biggest winner because Iran is, is, is making use of it, of course, benefiting from it every day without losing anything. But the big problem now that those don't mention all uh, American uh, officials and others. They don't know or they, they don't want to know that what's happening in Yemen is a big problem because uh, Yemen is being killed, Yemen is being destroyed for nothing, for very, 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 uh, uh, for, for baseless uh, justifications and, uh, uh, and also uh, the, what they say about the, um, the legitimate government uh, or the so-called legitimate government is, you know, you can just imagine if it is legitimate after four years with all this support from all over the world. So what kind of legitimacy is it? It is not legitimacy. And uh, it is not also Houthi. If Houthi, you know, Houthi, they call it Houthi is Zaidi, is Shia, is, ba is Iran backed uh, or Iran proxy or something like this. If it's only, if it's this symbol, they would have defeated him. Right. They, they would have defeated him after two years, three years, four years now, with all this support. But it's not like this. Yemeni people is now defending itself against US-backed Saudi aggression. This is the fact. And if, you, if, if, I, forget, if I forgot now a, a point, 
of the points you mentioned, you can also ask me, because I, I talked about Qaeda, Iran, and the so-called legitimate government, and why Iranians, uh, why uh, Americans officials say they don't know why, what they are doing in Yemen. Right, yeah, I think you covered all of those. T tell us yes. a little bit more about, you know, the, the enemy, per se, is very simplified here in the United States, as you, as you just explained. But what really is, is happening is a resistance movement in Yemen. Um, it's not just the Houthis, if you will. Tell us more about what this, what this resistance is like. I mean, is it an Iran-backed resistance? I mean, it's not really, is it? Uh, I, very good. See, I start very simply because I, I like your questions because your questions are completely different from others. Because this week I've been making interviews with a lot, a lot of U.S. media, and yours are different. Okay, let me tell you now this resistance. This resistance is not healthy. I am now spending all my time, all my resources with this resistance as Yemeni, and I am secularist. I am publicly secularist. Everybody knows in Yemen that I am secularist, which means... I am not Shia, I am not, I am not Sunni, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is that Iran, Iran is, is, is supporting, supporting what? Supporting, for example, politically and in, in terms of media. Yes, because Iran is benefiting from it. But you can't, please, you can't believe that Iran is supporting something like Saudi Arabia or money or weapons. No! Iran can't do it at all. Can't give us, they, they, they couldn't give us water when we needed water, some water uh, uh, because of the blockade. So Iran is supporting because they are benefiting. Supporting what? Supporting politically and in terms of media. But not more at all. They couldn't do it. They couldn't, and Americans know this very well. They know very well. They couldn't do anything anymore. Anything more than politics and, you know, some statements, okay, yes, that, and uh, some media, of course. They cover everything. They talk with us, they, yes, uh, but um, sending ballistic missiles to Yemen is very silly things. It's very stupid thing, you right. know, because Yemen, Yemen is blockaded for four years now, and you can't even get into Yemen uh, a bill, a, a piece of, you know, you can't get one thing, small thing, you can't get it because Saudi Arabia is, is uh, Saudi Arabia and its allies is, is, is blockading Yemen from, from sea and land and, uh, and the air. So how you can get into Yemen ballistic missiles that is, uh, you know, uh, very heavy things and very big things and this is... But to be honest with you, if there is any kind of exper exper expertise or experience, or it can it, it can be it can happen easily through emails. For example, if there is some good experts in Tehran or Iran who can help Yemenis, they don't need to come to Yemen, as Saudis say, or as as uh, fake media, if I can say, like Trump, say no, no, uh, they they could tell you uh, over email or in email what to do. It's just know-how experience. You but know, there is no single, there is no single Iranian here. There is no single, there is no polit. There is no Iranian polit in Yemen at all. But Iran, Iran w would want to, to give us everything. And of course we would welcome anything from Iran now because we, we, we are being bashed to Iran. But I'm honestly now telling you that Iran does not do anything more than political and media. Right. So they would if they could help uh, the Yemeni resistance, but you know the the blockade is just extremely. Yeah, they, they couldn't because of the blockade and because they are not rich. They are not. They, they are not that uh, rich to give us uh, money, for example, or a lot of a lot of weapons or something like this. And no, they can give you, as I told you, some expertise. Some, you know, they can. A talk with you, they can, yeah, that's, that's it. Well, that's another thing that I've always wondered. How do you manage to maintain your internet access? 
how have they why have they not shut down the internet on the um <laughs> It's very easy because they need it because you know we are one country, we are still one country, and the so-called legitimate government is still in need for this internet. Ha ah, this is the, yes that's interesting. Well, yes. I hope you keep your internet. We are access. one country, and even their money, their money, their Saudi money that comes to the so-called legitimate or the so-called liberated areas, we think we are Yemenis, we are in the same market, same things, same goods, same so. Their money comes to us on the same day, and the same day it comes from Saudi Arabia. And this is how we live for four years. So Saudi Arabia, if Saudi Arabia can, can deprive us from the sun and from the air, and they, they would have done it. But uh, they can't, they only can't. And, this, and the money, remittances from, from Saudi Arabia, a lot of remittances from Saudi Arabia, from the expat, from the, expat area, from the immigrants, from all over the world, is the thing that make Yemenis uh, keep living. Otherwise, uh, we'll have been dead now. It's, te- it's terrible. And they are, you know, it's a deliberate thing. It's an intentional thing. I mean, the, the, the war with economy, with the, the war with food, let me say. Let me be uh, uh, very blunt with you because I don't like sugar coating. So, uh, it's they fight us with with food, you know. They use the food and the medicine and water as a weapon. They they weaponize everything from the very beginning. Not not now, after four years of failure. No, from the very beginning, they want to make they they want to finish it. They want to decide it. They want to finish it as soon as possible. So they started with everything, with the economy, with your food, with your water, with your medicine, with your fuel, with everything. But as I told you, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because we are one country. So we are taking, we are exchanging things uh, from them. And the Yemenis who are working with them, we know why they are working with them. We are Yemenis and we know each other. We know their relatives. We talk every day. We know why they go. And we are not very angry. And we are not blaming them very much. Because if you see someone who doesn't have a one who doesn't have a penny, who doesn't have one dollar to live, and then he finds money somewhere there, what would you tell him? Yes, you would tell him, go, go wherever you like to live. So they go to, to fight with the Saudis to take money, and that's it. They, they take money, they, they sell their weapons uh, on, the, on the same day, and sometimes on the second day, and then they ask for another weapon or another yan to fight. And they keep like this all the year, and they know it. So uh, this is what is happening in Yemen. The battle for Hodeida, you are one of the few people, I've listened to your, a lot of your interviews, uh, particularly, I just heard the one on my local public radio, WHYY, the other day. And But I've, I've been listening to your interviews on Scott Horton's show for a long time now. And um, when that battle first began, when they were trying to invade Hodeida and take hold of the port, it really looked pretty grim. From this perspective, from over here, it looked pretty much like that port was going to be lost in short order. But you were one of the only people saying, no, that it's not going to work. The the resistance... Uh, yeah. and yes, yes, yes. That yeah. Up to right now, it appears that... Is it true that that... Um, that that battle is pretty much suspended at the moment? Or what's the story with what's going on with Hodada? They started, not have not started, as you said. They have already started this battle, and they failed. They failed. They have been chopped away, and they have been blockaded and besieged, and they faced the strong and the fierce resistance and stiff resistance and they saw the people who came to Hudayda, the fighters who came to Hudayda and they saw how the city has become. The city has become now uh, trenches. All the city now is is, is dug in. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a place of, of war now and uh, to 
to see something like this, they realized that they need new forces, new new forces, new special forces, new weapons, new war, warfare, and everything, because it's it will be from street to street war if they want. Yemenis are determined to defend themselves. We told them, even if, if we lose, Hudaydah, if we, they will not end. Saudi Arabia will not be secure by this at all. They know very well. They talk about, they, do you know what they talk? They talk about, we want to push uh, Houthi to the negotiation table only. But uh, they say like this, and they, they do their crimes, and their crimes uh, bounces on them every day, and they do the war crimes, the war crimes, like killing children, uh, killing people at home, schools and hospitals, weddings, funerals, and all these things. So they, everything bounces against them always. So Hudayda is like any place now. It's like any place. But for them, for what they said, they said they took it over from the day one, last June, at the early last, last June, they said they took control over the airport. They couldn't even take a picture in this airport. With all, despite all this, despite all what they have. Right. So it's not, I'm not now talking about, I'm not now talking about, about, uh, uh, about magic things or about uh, uh, miracles and, or about, uh, about, I'm not also belittling. I'm not belittling what Saudi Arabia has and what US has and, no. But my determination is they could not, they could not, whatever they have, whatever they do, they could not make us what they want. They could not, they could not subjugate us or they could not uh, enslave us as they want. No, this is impossible. It never happened over history. But yeah. uh, if I talk about their, if I talk about their, their strength and their weapons and uh, U.S. weapons and everything, yes, I, I, I would say yes, 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 we couldn't. We should leave it to other day, as some people have been advising me. And I told them there is no other day with Saudi Arabia at all. It always seems to come down to the ground troops, ground forces, and, you know, you can bomb you can uh, use mortars and things like that, but in the end, yes, to exactly. take this, to take the, the territory, end, you know, you at, have to. At the end, it is that bare, bare foot, bare foot, single man, single fighter, brave fighter who wants to defend himself, because most of the fighters now have no families, have no houses, they've got nothing to lose. You know, it's still their homeland, but now. As you say, they've lost family, friends, their home. I mean, it's. Um, I, I'm telling you now from my experience. I met many people of them. Many, many people of them, whether in Hodeida or in uh, in Midi, that is at the border with Saudi Arabia. They are homeless. I mean, their houses have been completely destroyed, and some of them uh, lost uh, wife, children, and everything. And, uh, you know, when I met them the, for the first time, I, I told them how you face all these things, because th there is there is a place I, where I have been to, Midi. Midi is uh, e even easier than Hudeda, because it's just plains, and it's desert, and it's at the border of Saudi Arabia, at the border. And they have been resisting, they have been fighting for four years now there. Although, you know, uh, the, the Abachi is over you all the time, all the time, I'm, I'm saying all the time. And there are many uh, tanks, uh, the, uh, Bradley and uh, Abrams and all these things. But you, you, just, you just find the soldier in a, in, a, in a small hole in this desert, and he's just staying, and he, he will never, ever leave until that Abrams or that Bradley or whatever uh, would come to him and he would he would kill them but abachi if abachi fires it would kill just one at at most what if, fire did you say I'm... the abachi the abachi they do, they are not afraid of abachi the abachi the helicopter abachi oh the, apache i'm sorry yeah the abachi if they if they fire they would kill what they could one one soldier at most and they know they 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 are not afraid of this 
They, because you just find one soldier here, and after 200 or 300 meters or 500 sometimes, in, in, the, other, in the other point. I, I saw this with my own eyes, and I stayed with them for four days because I wanted to know. And I wanted to know how. And they told me briefly, they, 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 one of the commanders, they told me, if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, calculate things with your logic, then um, you will find no solution and no answer with us. Because if you talk about what we have and what they have, then uh, you will uh, you will you will reach no you will reach no conclusion you will reach uh, you will you will not find any kind of s- solution it just seems impossible yes yes exactly it's impossible it's it's but uh, i told him then how he said it's uh, uh, miracles or something like this or whatever you like but you can't just uh, compare us with with our enemy who has everything and we have nothing they have some weapons that they have taken but a lot of these weapons are weapons that we supplied to the Yemen military, right? Like the anti-tank missiles, is that? Yes, this is, this is the most important thing. The anti-tank is, is the most important thing they have because there are brief, they have brief fighters and they go. They just go, they walk until he is very close and then he shoots the, the tank or Bradley or whatever. Well, what they must be really good at is hiding their stockpiles, it, right? Because... Uh, as far as I know, the Yemen is flooded with weapons and of of every kind. But if nothing can get in, then the stockpiles are one of their most valuable things. So they must be pretty yes. good at hiding them. Yes, it's in uh, Yemen now. Yemen, all Yemen, uh, as you said, flooded with weapons, and all Yemen, south and north, uh, is is against Saudi Arabia as as as, as invader. You know because it's. Uh, they know what Saudi Arabia means, and they know everybody knows what Saudi Arabia wants. They are they 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 laugh at Saudi Arabia or at anyone who says it's a matter of uh, Iran because uh, Iran is uh, is not there. You know, Iran is now getting closer and closer now because of Saudi war, but Iran was is not there and would not be there. And for the if they say about if they say no because Houthi is Shia or Zaidi. No, the, the, the majority of the fighters now are not Zaidi, are not Shia. They are Yemenis from everywhere. Yemenis from everywhere defending themselves. And as I told you, everybody knows the, the, the percentage of Zaidis. They are less than 30% of Yemenis. And, um, you know, uh, Houthi, uh, you know, they are also, some of them are with Hadi in Riyadh or in Abu Dhabi or whatever. But it's it's a matter of so, uh, Saudi Arabia have been killing and destroying Yemen, which means they they unified Yemenis against it, and they the lo- the the longer the war gets, the more unified Yemenis get, and this is very uh, well known. So, the more they attack, the broader and bigger the resistance becomes. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. That makes makes sense, and we see the uh, the huge. Protest. Uh, you, you can just you can just measure. You can just measure. We started without any, without any uh, uh, ballistic missiles, and now we are we are. Uh, Saudi Arabia said that they destroyed what we had from the Soviet Union or from, you know, from Saleh regime. They destroyed it in the first day or in the first minutes, and then we have now we have now ballistic missiles that you, that uh, that reach uh, Riyadh and Abu Dhabi and everybody knows, and. Uh, uh, why? Because uh, because uh, because of the cooperation of everyone, because of the cooperation of the commanders who who were in the army. Not Houthi doesn't have that experience, but people who are in the army now are with Houthi, the uh, experts and the commanders and everyone. Saleh, you know, was alone. No one was with Saleh, unfortunately. So the in the news articles here, they talk about a Yemeni army, a Yemen military, the Yemen, you know, national military. Who are they talking about when they... They, talk? they are talking about Qaeda ISIS. They are talking about Qaeda ISIS, and I'm very responsible for what I'm saying. Qaeda ISIS only. Wow. Qaeda oh, ISIS, and I think now, I think the American intelligence know what I mean by Qaeda ISIS. They call them like this, and 
they know what happened. They know what happened when, when, when Trump made his uh, commander's operation here in January when he, when he took office, two days after he took office. In, uh, when uh, when this, this operation, or the commander's operation, in, uh, took place, they know what Qaeda ISIS told them. They know that the, the weapons were with Qaeda and the money, Saudi money, was with Qaeda and they were... Uh, and uh, uh, the people in Riyadh told them, why you killed our people? Why you killed our people? They are with us in the resistance, in the national resistance. And I'm talking about the names now, everybody knows. But it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to tell you about everything. But it is, you know, their commanders are in, in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh based. They are uh, in, uh, based in Riyadh, the commanders of Qaeda ISIS. And some of them were governors and ministers. And still, some of them are still governors and ministers. And uh, they are commanders of Qaeda ISIS by the American standards, not by me, by my standards, by American standards. About seven of them, seven of them are designated, seven at least designated as global terrorists by U.S. Treasury Department. Well, it's interesting because earlier this month, I'm sure you read about the Associated Press, the AP investigation. That revealed, um, let me just read a little bit. It says, yes, I know that. Yeah, you're familiar uh, with it. Okay. Thank you for AB. Thank, I told everyone when they called me, I guess I, I, guess I, I, I was saying only thank you for AB because it helped me what I told you four years ago. Right, you I, did. I just said this. I just said this because nothing new in AB at all. And what, men- what was mentioned in AB report was just a drop in a big ocean. Very little. Yeah, so it's out in the open now. And uh, let me read a little bit. But it's okay, you know. The, the new thing I told them, the new thing is that the new thing in the report is it, it's coming from U.S. It's coming from AB. This is the new. But for, for us, it's nothing. Nothing new. Right. So they say, the coalition cut secret. This is a quote from the article. Yes, quote, yes. The coalition cut secret deals with al-Qaeda fighters paying some to leave key cities and towns and letting others retreat with weapons, equipment, and wads of looted cash an investigation by the Associated Press has found. Hundreds more were recruited to join the coalition itself. Unquote. Now here's another, another excerpt. Key participants in the pact said that the U.S. was aware of the arrangements and held off on any drone strikes. The deals uncovered by the AP reflect the contradictory interests of the two wars being waged simultaneously in this southwestern corner of the Arabian Peninsula. In one conflict, the U.S. is working with its Arab allies, particularly the United Arab Emirates, with the aim of eliminating the branch of extremists known as Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or AQAP. But the larger mission is to win the civil war against the Houthis, Iranian-backed Shiite rebels. And in that fight, Al-Qaeda militants are effectively on the same side as the Saudi-led coalition, and by extension, the United States. Quote, elements of the U.S. military are clearly aware that much of what the U.S. is doing in Yemen is aiding AQAP, and there is much angst about that, said Michael Horton a fellow at the Jamestown Foundation, a U.S. analysis group that tracks terrorism. Quote, however, supporting the UAE and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia against what the U.S. views as Iranian expansionism takes priority over battling AQAP and even stabilizing Yemen, unquote, Horton said. So um, they do twist the story a little bit there. But the important thing is that they reveal that there's cooperation with Al-Qaeda. And uh, as as you said, is is not news to people in Yemen. But it is news to a lot of Americans. And I suspect it's not going to be, well, people are not going to be happy about this. Now, you can already see that, uh, that the UAE is not happy about that AP investigation. Because there is a big article in The Independent 
uh, where they actually interview the UAE military commanders on the ground in Yemen. I've never seen that before. And they note that the UAE military leadership, This uh, the links to these articles will be in the show notes um, for this podcast. The UAE military leadership say it is their job and their highest priority to crush AQAP as the only member of the Gulf Coalition Council to have previous counter-terror experience from their time in Afghanistan. They have vehemently denied accusations that their successes have relied on doing deals with AQAP members. So they're uh, they're denying this and they're sort of touting their, um, they're saying we're the only ones with troops on the ground, unlike Saudi Arabia. They're sort of like, uh, you can get a little peek at the the conflict between the Saudis and the Emiratis themselves in this article. But, you know, I just wanted to bring that up. It's, it's, it's such a key point. Yes. yes. If you allow me, I will wrap it up and I will help you in as a one in, uh, who have been observing this from the very beginning. Okay. And great. I will, I will tell you, I will, I will tell you that what they call national army is only Qaedaises, only Qaedaises, which means that no one, no one uh, fighting with Saudi Arabia sincerely, except Qaedaises. Are they all foreign fighters or are they Yemenis being paid as well? Yeah, let let me, let me. uh, There is no Yemeni, there is no Yemeni fighting with Saudi Arabia sincerely, except Qaedaises which are Qaedaises, when I say Qaedaises, majority Yemenis, of course, and uh, as you know, Qaedaises can be from any, any place. So no sincere, no sincere fighters except Qaedaises. The others, there are many, of course, there are many Yemenis who are not Qaedaises and who are within the so-called national army or whatever. They are there to take money, not to fight. Not to fight. Some of them get killed because uh, because they uh, sometimes they couldn't protect themselves. Yes, but most of them don't want to go and fight and get killed. But Qaedaises, of course, they they um, I mean they are not afraid of being killed at all, and they 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 fight. And this is why Saudi Arabia and Emirates depend mainly on them. Mainly on them. Mainly. On them. The other thing, other than mainly, the other thing is, or this, is uh, the uh, planes and the uh, advanced weapons and the other things that make 100%. So majority is Qaeda ISIS fighters who defend or who fight with them without being afraid of, uh, of being uh, killed or whatever. And the other thing is they have money, they have weapons, they have planes, they have everything. But no Yemeni fighting with them, even those who are enemy of, of Houthi. The, the big enemies of Houthi are in Riyadh, in uh, Istanbul, in Turkey, in, in Doha, in Abu Dhabi. And, but the, the, normal fight, the normal fighters in Yemen are Qaeda, ISIS, or some poor people who want money. Mm-hmm. Right? And of course, in addition to the missionaries from outside Yemen. Mercenaries, right? Yes, missionaries from everywhere, from Sudan, from uh, uh, from uh, South America, from everywhere. Blackwater uh, has been here, and as you know, and everyone, of course. There are a lot of uh, fighters. And one last thing, uh, Nasser. You say that all Yemenis understand what the Saudis want. What, what do they, what do the Saudis and the Emiratis want? Do they want to control and exploit Yemen? They want uh, to own Yemen, but not like now. Now they say we are not involved in Yemen. We are not engaged in Yemen. We are just helping two factions fighting each other. And this is not right. They are Saudis are the one who is killing and destroying Yemen. And now they want they want to form they want to form a, a government that is Saudi. Saudi government, but they call it Yemeni government. This is what they want. Why? Because they want to uh, to keep Yemen as they want. They don't. 
they want to take the wealth of Yemen, uh, the lands of Yemen, the, the, the ports of Yemen, and the seas of Yemen, and everything. Now they are, what is happening in, in, in Mukalla now, and in Mahra, and in, uh, in Sokatra, uh, is helping me, or is proving what I'm saying now. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows mm-hmm. now that they, they want to occupy, they want to have uh, boats, and they, the uh, Emirates wants to have the boats because they they want uh, they want to have uh, they want to keep uh, Dubai boat uh, the only one the good one and these things, and Saudi Arabia has its own things because they know that there, there is a, a big of wealth, a big of oil in Yemen, maybe more and more than Saudi Arabia, and they don't want because they see that if Yemen is strong, we uh, will be dead, will be nothing. If Yemen is a state, a respected state, we are nothing. Yes, they say why we are with history, with five five thousand years history, and they don't have. So what could we? What, what can we? What can we do for such a situation? They don't want us to be with a history, with with a big history, and they don't have. And this is just small thing, but the the concrete thing is the money, the wealth, the oil. So they want to take our oil. That's they, where the urgency yeah. is, is coming yes. from. Yes. Okay. Anything else that you would like to say before we, we wrap up? Thank you very much. What I want to say is that uh, Yemen needs attention from everywhere because what's happening, the uh, U.S.-Saudi war crimes in Yemen threaten everyone everywhere, not only Yemenis, everyone everywhere because... Simply, these crimes violate all laws, UN laws, international laws, heaven laws, and earth laws, and everything, everything. So, uh, if you if you see laws being violated this way, uh, you should be threatened. You should be afraid because it it, it would come to you. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Yes. That's right. Okay, um, and also, where can people find your work and follow your your writings and your commentary? In, uh, Twitter, uh, tw- Twitter and uh, Facebook. And because, you know, we have not that much time to write because I've been writing with a lot of uh, Western media newspapers, but now, because, I'm, you know, I'm, I have that position, so they don't like me to write this way. And I can't, uh, also uh, renounce what I am believing. So I am just writing in my platforms, Twitter and Facebook and blogs and all these things. And uh, and like you, people, uh, free people like you, channel TVs and radios and broadcast and uh, broadcast and uh, all these things. Yeah, I've seen and heard you on I don't know at least four interviews in the past couple of, of weeks. That's your you know your. Oh, voice... no, I, 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 I've been I've been a journalist for twenty years with many, many, many newspapers, and I can say the Saudi-led coalition, I can say the legitimate government, the Yemeni government, the Yemeni president, but as a Yemeni, I, I can not say now more than the fact I believe. So I say the Saudi puppet, I say the so-called legitimate government, I say the U.S.-Saudi aggression, I, I can't say any other thing, and a lot of people, of course, a lot of media would not allow me to say something like this. Uh, we, 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 they don't want me to do, to do that because they they consider it not, not right. Yeah, they have to maintain the official narrative. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. well, Nasser, thank you but, so uh, much. Um, I'm, I have everything. I don't feel that I, 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 we have enough platforms and we talk and a lot of people now react with me and uh, alhamdulillah, everything is okay. That's great. And uh, I know, you know, your voice is an important one for me to understand what's really going on. And I hope that you're able to keep speaking out. And I hope that you'll come back on our, on this podcast and talk to us again. Thank you very, very much, Juan. Thank you very much for your interest in Yemen. Take care, Nasser. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. And that's our show. Thank you for listening, and a special thanks to Nasser Arabi. Follow him on Twitter at Narabi, that's N-A-R-R-A-B-Y-E-E. 
Keep an eye out for his print, radio, and podcast interviews. And find his work at his website, yemen-now.com. Around the Empire podcast is independent media, brought to you with the help of our generous donors. You can pitch in by going to patreon.com slash aroundtheempire or by doing a one-time donation via our website, aroundtheempire.com. Follow us on Twitter at Around the Empire. It helps a lot of you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, and that's free, because it's possible to get revenue from that channel via live streams with Super Chat donations capability after the number of subscribers reaches 1,000. Also, use the thumbs up icon to like the individual videos. Subscribe to our podcast channel on iTunes or on your preferred radio and podcast apps like iHeartRadio. If you like the podcast, take a minute to leave a nice review. It helps. And lastly, please like our page on Facebook. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.